I want to know how do I get booked by a speaker's bureau? If that's your question, you are in the right place. My name is Marquesa Petway, business reinvention expert, professional speaker, the columnist for Speaker Toolkit, which happens to be in Speaker Magazine. Woohoo! I know you read it. Today, I have a special gift for you. Yes, we're going to answer all of your Speaker Bureau's questions, or at least the top ones. We have a superstar here who has recently become a really cool friend, and I'm so excited to get to know her. Her name is Andrea Bold, and she runs and owns the Gold Stars Speakers Bureau. <laughs> and guys, she's been in the business for 28 years. Is that right, Andrea? Yes, I'm 100 years old. Don't I look great? <laughs> Started when you were 12. <laughs> Welcome to Speaker Magazine Live. Everyone is watching this intently because they want to pull out your pens and your paper. But before we get into that question, how did you become a Speakers Bureau owner? Well, you certainly don't go to college for it. I didn't even know what it was, and I did not have a background in the events and meetings industries. So. <laughs> I fell into it. I have a journalism background, just so you know. But uh, in my wanderings, as a favor for a friend, he was a TV anchor and he was a speaker. Uh, I was booking a few people. I didn't know what I was really doing, but I was booking a few people locally. And he said, there's somebody coming to town, Dottie, Dottie Walters. Remember her? And, yes, what am I meant to And she had, she, she's now gone, but she had a bureau. And he said, would you please show her around? and um, uh, book her for some interviews on radio and TV. So I did. And in the process, she said, have you ever thought of starting a speaker's bureau? And my response was, what's that? What's a speaker's bureau? And she said, you should start one. I think you would do well. So I did, not knowing what in heck I was doing. <laughs> so some of the best learning comes when you don't try, or when you don't know what you're doing and you try really hard. I should say the opposite. So. Um, we had some guidance along the way, including from Dottie, and we just learned by the seat of our pants, my husband and I, and we've been doing this now for 28 years, and we do work worldwide. Wow. Well, first of all, thanks for sharing it with us. I am a Dottie Walters fan. I was one of her many students. Oh, I didn't know. That's wonderful. You know, Marquez, I should say one more thing, um, and my husband and I wrote this book. I, I know it's backwards on the screen, the business. Actually, it's, and not, so, it's not. It's not? No. Oh. The business of successful speaking because we had so many speakers asking us for help and and taking our time and you know time is money in our business time is money right. so what we did was we and this isn't an advertisement as much as i want people to know i come from the heart always about how can we help people so this book is answering a lot of questions it, it's a few years old now but the the questions are perennial the answers are perennial. They'll never go out of date. So anything to help people to do a better job and uh, better business. So I know that you wanted to, to ask me some questions about yeah. the bureau. Yes, I want to ask you this question. First of all, um, I'm a little tickled, maybe because I've been in a business for 12 plus years, when I hear a new speaker saying, I need a bureau. So here's a million dollar question. At what point during a speaker's career, should they approach a bureau for representation? Well, something I tell people is they don't necessarily ever need a speaker's bureau. A, a, a speaker's bureau is really icing on the, the cake. It is extra. You on your own as a speaker should be getting enough business that you don't have to depend on a third party. Now, a lot of bureaus today, there's a, there's a lot of new models out there and a lot of bureaus have become speaker managers and also have exclusive speakers so if if you're listening to this and you're at the earlier stages of your career i don't recommend you even think about a bureau you need to get bookings you need to get experience you need to get good and then with some of the elements that you need and i think marquesa you might ask me this later is what kind of video demo do I have? You know, you have to do a lot of speaking to get some very good clips. It takes a lot of work. And then, um, do I have the experience? Do I have the platform skills? And do I, am I in the upper echelon to now approach a bureau? If it's early in your game, 
I don't recommend it because you might not get a second chance. So I know this interview is about how to work with bureaus and I will give you everything I can to help, but don't be too quick to put bureaus on the top of your list. I know I'm great, but <laughs> no, I mean, bureaus are good marketers, but there's a misconception about um, that bureaus are going to market you because you're listed with them. And that's a question you might want to ask me down the road. Wow. This is so important, Andrea. I love that. Oh, I, I, I could do a, a brain dump with you for <laughs> hours on this because I have your best interest in mind. Yeah. I want you to succeed, but you can go too far too fast. So Makes sense. Keep now, kind of going back a little bit, the takeaway from that was don't be too anxious to sign with a speaker's bureau. Like yeah, you could. One, yes. You want to really get good because you only have one chance to make that first impression. So now let's say that the speaker is ready. They're thinking, I got it tight. I've made all the mistakes. I am right. ready for the representation. <laughs> what is step one? Step one is they better, or you better have very good marketing materials. Marketing. Some of the main elements that you need before you even approach a bureau are a very good video demo. And I mean, not the ambient sound where, you know, you're not direct mic. I don't know what the technical term is, but uh, you, you need to have professional video. And it, it, otherwise, even though you're the greatest speaker in the world, you're going to look like a sucky speaker, excuse the expression. <laughs> Let's be frank here. Now, now yeah. Andrea, on that same note, we're yeah. in 2017, and I've seen a ton of demo videos, just came back from the NSA Video Lab. Folks right. are doing so differently now. Some of, sometimes it's great to be in front of the biggest audience possible and right. on the big stage. And sometimes folks will just walk out into their yard or some building and start talking. There's a lot of B-roll going on. Oh. What's your advice about that? I totally have good advice about that. And I want to get back to the, the uh, there were a few other points to that other question too, if we want to go there. Absolutely. You need to do video in front of audiences whether it's small or large i don't give a darn in i don't think your your prospect is going to give a darn if you speak in your backyard maybe for if it's informative for a minute or two but they want to see how you are with the audience and key they want to see how the audience responds to you and do you engage your audience that's becoming more and more important so are you just talking at your audience? Are they sitting there falling asleep? I don't care what size it is, there's a way to engage an audience. And, and this is what makes a professional speaker. So you could be an okay speaker, but a great speaker, those are the ones the bureaus want to work with and that our clients expect we're working with. A great speaker can engage their audience, keep their interest, uh, deliver excellent content and do it in an interesting way. Now, Andrea, I'm sure speakers are listening and they're going, okay, I got the demo video together. We've heard 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two yeah. minutes. Now you do this every day, day in and day out as you yeah. How far into the video will you go before you go, yes or no? Say what, no, I How didn't hear How far into the video will you watch it? Oh, oh, great question. Yeah. Um, my counsel, my sage counsel based on 28 years, well, almost, because it used to be audio tapes, guys, <laughs> um, is that your first 30 seconds better be even less than that, better be engaging and dynamic and really get to the point. No fluffing around, kiddos. You might have a trailer or, or whatever they call it right in the beginning, but uh, you better show you speaking very quickly or they're going to move on. You have a lot of competition out there. So you've got to make it count. And they're already thinking that, boy, is this the speaker's best stuff? Because they figure you're going to put that up front. So I'm that? speaking like your prospect. Uh -huh. You've got, you know, I'm, 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 I come from the school of be bold. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't want to say hit hard, but hit fast. And then you could backtrack and then you could show more detail and more style, but make the first 30 seconds count, make it impactful. So they want to see more. That's your, your challenge. That's my challenge to you. All right, guys, you heard her say it. Yeah. 
first 30 seconds full and they want to see you interacting with the audience and how the audience responds to you. Now, Andrea, yeah. you mentioned marketing materials. Video is just a part of that. Video is part of it. There's some other marketing materials. Right. Well, you need to let, it, it doesn't have to be packaged per se, but you need to let a bureau know that you have, uh, and put it in a very succinct form. That's what I would do. Uh, your presentation titles, your bio, a short and long version, ideally, because you don't know how they're using it. Um, let's see, your fees, and that means your keynote, half day, full day, international. And please let the Bureau know up front, is it net or commissionable? Because I don't want to have to go back to you. I just had to do that today with somebody. He, he meant well, but he, he said, here's my fees. I was like, well, is that net or commissionable? That's an extra step for me. Time is money. Mm -hmm. So tell me up front. And some bureaus, I, I know uh, NSA, you don't talk about specific commissions, but some bureaus have different commissions than others. So you need to be aware of that too. So you need to keep good records on your bureaus if you're going to work with them. You know, how do they work? How do they like their materials delivered? I just gave you a few. So I know some of you are thinking, well, what about a one sheet? Yeah. A one sheet's great. It's a marketing tool. And the more that you give a bureau, the more, but you don't want to overwhelm them. But the more that you give a bureau, the more they have to work with. They can choose to work with it or not. But please don't send me a nine megabyte file. <laughs> you know, that's now, just, this is exciting. Now, of course, the, the overall speaker website, any quick advice, Andrea? That seems to be the holy grail for a lot of us speakers is making sure that our website is represented the right way. There's so many different ways where it's just about you, it's about your expertise, it's you walking across the website, it's the video. Oh my goodness, help us out. <laughs> what, what are two or three things we need to keep in mind when it comes to getting your attention, the speaker's Oh, you're gonna hate my answer. Uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> hit me, hit me. <laughs> I, I never said I'm, I'm trying to win friends and influence people on in this interview. <laughs> That's no part to let him do. One thing, there's one thing that I will always do, and that is tell you the truth. Mm. I'm honest to the core, and I, I come from the highest good wanting to help you. Always keep that in mind. So you're going to hate my answer. And that is <laughs> that websites are really not key to a bureau. Get out of here! No. Well, I mean, we're going to go there to update your data. Yeah. But I'm not necessarily, can you imagine if I, I'm approached by a, a few a day, okay? A few, a few a day. If I were to go to everybody's website oh, okay. every day, how much time will I have That's to do my other work? Ah. So I want you to keep time in mind always when you work with a beer. I don't care how experienced and how good you are. Be very respectful of a bureau's time. So the way you'll get a bureau's attention most, one of the answers is do it very quickly, succinctly. Now that material, just going back to that, and, and we're, we're jumping a little, but forgive me. When you send material to a bureau, make sure it's succinct. I always tell people presentation titles. You know, you can have links, present or just list them there, you know, copy paste. Uh, fees, you know, just it doesn't have to be pretty, but make it useful. I don't want to have to jump around. I actually resent having to go to a beer uh, to a speaker's website page to update. I'd rather you just send me the bio. It's just so much work to have to find and format, and reformat. If you could just send it to me, then I'll have it. And some speakers are like, just go to my website. And they really resent having to um, send something. But I think you should give the Bureau the option to, you know, do you want me to send it to you or do you want to go to my website? Or the other way, a uh, little tip for you is have a, uh, and a lot of speakers do this already, a section for meeting planners. And that also would be for Bureaus. And it has the photos, downloadable photos, the bios, the titles, the, the one sheet, you know, whatever it is, testimonials. Some put everything up there. It's like a garbage dump, but it's, it's a good one. <laughs> I love that. So have that meeting plan as we've been taught. Oh, my gosh. I, it, it, just think how much time it will save you, the speaker. It's not just the, the bureau it's, uh, and the meeting planner. It's you. 
you're not answering all these requests and you keep it up to date too that's critical so you also use uh, e-speakers as a resource e-speakers uh well um i don't power my website with e-speakers but a lot of bureaus do so it's it's really important i know my husband is on there too um it's important that you keep that up to date and because you don't know who's powering and i mean it is another way to connect to a bureau without you even trying. I know they also have the e-speaker um, blasts, they call it. Yes. And I get those every day, every day. Now, Andrea, so, how, I'm sure people are just wanting to know too, how do you go about finding your speakers for boroughs? A lot of folks, they understand, all right, I got the website, I need to make sure the website is ready, make sure it's user-friendly, make sure that demo is top-notch. But then there's a whole nother uh, part of this process with getting someone like yours attention. You said earlier, you get approached by speakers every day. How do we stand out? How do we get you to pay attention to us? Okay, so do you want to know how I find speakers or how they should approach me? Uh, both. Let's start with how you find speakers. Well, um, I don't have to find speakers because I have so many. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that every speaker feels that he or she is like the next best thing and maybe they are maybe they aren't <laughs> um really not for them to decide that but it's good to have good confidence and self-esteem in any case however have a little humility um we we are so overwhelmed with speakers already and we have established relationships so it's becoming harder for a speaker to stand out because there's so many in the game. So you really have to be superb to stand out or on top of that, your topic area, the angle of your topic or your topic area is going, or your experience is going to make you stand out. Mm -hmm. So find out, find that USP, find something that just really rocks. That USP, yes, the, the unique selling proposition is absolutely a perfect way to go about your whole business. That should be actually at the beginning of your strategy as far as I'm concerned. If I were a speaker, I'd be saying, what is it, the unarticulated need or the, the need that's out there that's proven, like leadership is obviously a big one, customer service, but what's my angle on it? There you go. What makes me unique? Well, me, and it could be your background. I mean, if you worked at Southwest Airlines, I could think of a person right now who did and uh, made a whole career out of it. And, and that's, a, uh, I know a few. <clears throat> that makes a, a huge, that's a huge positioning statement, you know, because they're well known for that. Yeah, that's so. true. Oh, wow. Now, the second part of that question. We yes. Know. How do they approach me? Yes. Ooh, that's a big one. Okay, so I want to know that the person is established, that they have really good marketing material, especially the video. That video is more important than almost anything, unless you have some unique topic that no one else could compete against. So it's going to be that video. They're going to look at it and go, oh, yeah. I mean, remind me, I want to tell you a little story about the video. So uh, let's see, on top of that, are you well packaged? Uh, are you in demand? I mean, do you have a topic that is of interest? Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I, somebody approached me and she had a topic on divorce. Now, most bureaus probably don't work with that. Think about it, because they're working with corporate or trade associations that are made up of corporations. So, you know, that's a personal development topic but not everybody's going to deal with it unless there's some kind of wellness program, perhaps in a corporation or something. But you, you need to think of your market, you know, your strategy. I love that. Well, who's your universe? You know, I, I have this built in sense of marketing. I wasn't trained in this, but I, you know, it just think whatever you do in business, what's your strategy? What's your, who's your market? I mean, I know speakers just want to throw arrows out there, you know, shoot those arrows and see what, what sticks. Mm -hmm. But if you develop a niche or a number of industries or because of your background, you know, maybe, you know, it, you've worked in some kind of industry, um, which most people have, mm -hmm. uh, that will give you a great edge. So there. So, um, yeah, that would, that would be my answer for the, how to approach a beer in general. I could tell you more about how to approach, you know, the cre the more pro, you had asked me earlier about proactive approaches when we were talking before this video. 
So would you like to know more about that? Absolutely. Okay. So proactively, uh, there's a few creative suggestions I have for you. And one is that you either, uh, let's say you get a hot lead and you obviously would return the call. But what you could do is say, hey, Bureau X, I'd love to work with you. Would you like to handle this hot lead for me? Well, we have to make a big decision because if we handle it, that means we have to know about you. So it's really, it's clever. It's, it's hot. I mean, you're giving up whatever percentage commission if they book it, but it forces us to really know you. And if we know you, we're going to probably work with you more, you know, if, if it's a successful booking, you know, if we, and we're going to really feel beholden to you because that's very big thinking on your part. Very I'm not saying do this. You know, some people are probably saying, oh my God, that's obnoxious. Well, you don't have to do this and you don't have to work with the BR. I want to give you one basic tip, by the way, and that is if you want to work with the Bureau, work wholeheartedly. If you don't work wholeheartedly and you have a resentment about commissions, don't work with the Bureau. I respect you. You don't have to say yes. Uh, I mean, when I approach you, I'd love the chance to work with you. Maybe you just could try out working with the Bureau and if you're not used to doing it and see how it goes. You know, you don't have to make a lifelong commitment. You can do it case by case. I've done that with people that are saying, I don't really want to work with bureaus. Okay, then let's do this one. And they were fine with that. You work it out. You know, everything's negotiable, right? Yes, I love it. And this is such, this is, Andrea, you're such a gold mine. And the gold works in your name. Well, that's because my last name's gold. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know, totally corny, corny. But it fits. You just mentioned work wholeheartedly. So I take that to me. That means, you know, create that relationship. Let us know when you get the hot lead, call us up. Let us do the negotiation. Let us handle all of that. And so you have to choose. Yeah. You know, one thing you got to look at is there's different models of bureaus out there that are even more today. So as I said earlier, there's exclusive, there's speaker managers, there's a hybrid model where they do some speaker management and then they they work uh, with people that are not exclusive um i'm i'm one of the few left everybody's really gone to some kind of exclusive kind of management situation um i i manage a few very special people um but it's not my main focus you know uh, the exclusive bureaus are beholden to those people and they're they're really obligated to try to book them as much as possible um so you know, that's something to keep in mind is uh, who, which kind of bureaus are you approaching or are they really going to be interested in you? Okay. You know, that's so don't approach bureaus thinking they, they're ready, you know, for another speaker. Mm -hmm. you, they may not be looking for speakers at all. <laughs> so. In other words, make them want you. Make it interesting. Yeah. So, so the other, I have one more creative suggestion that is a gold mine in itself, which if you've listened this far, You'll be very happy you did if you don't know it. And that is, uh, you can, you as a speaker, can approach another established speaker who's already working with that bureau you'd like to work with and have them recommend you. But my one caveat on that, it's really powerful. You know, it's like uh, you saw so and so and you work with me already, and so and so would be great in your stable, as they like to say. And uh, you might want to check this person out and give some information, and make an introduction. The one caveat, make sure you've seen the speaker speak. Otherwise, I feel like you're just pawning off a speaker and, you know, in order to, to get brownie points with that person and you know, try to do them a favor, but you're really not doing anybody a favor because your, your um, re referral doesn't mean anything to me if you haven't seen them speak. Ugh. Yeah. Love that. Here's a question. Yeah. This is another strategy that's worked for quite a few speakers, but I'm curious to know your thought on this. Uh huh. Is you are in Tucson, Arizona, correct? Yeehaw! Well, let's, okay. <laughs> let's say that a speaker is going to be speaking right in your backyard, and they're like, oh my goodness, I want to be represented by Gold Star Speaker. Yes, you can invite them. Ah, so, that, so you'll do it. 
Good. Well, and it doesn't mean I'll always go because, again, remember, time is of the essence. So if I don't know you from Adam and you're inviting me to see you, you yeah. better give me some reason to see you. Uh-huh. Gotcha. And also, you probably, if there's another bureau who booked you, that's a good thing in a way because that means you're already, you have bureau relationships. That's another tip, by the way. Uh, you know, you can tell a new bureau that you're approaching. I already work with so-and-so bureaus, meaning they booked me. Not that they've listed me. That means nothing if they haven't booked you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, tell me more about you to make it worth my while to see you speak. I've even had people offer me money. I, I don't think that's, yeah, I know. I, well, it is time. It's almost like a consultation. But um, it doesn't mean I've taken them up on that. But um, yeah, it's, it's a really good tactic. I, I think you'd be stupid not to mention you're in somebody's city anyway. I've, I've had speakers I work with say, after the fact, I, you know, or, or I just happened to see it on eSpeakers or something you know, that I, I spoke in Tucson. I'm like, they didn't even tell me they were here. You know, it's like, oh, I guess they don't care. So, wow. Yeah. wow, that's big. So guys, you hear this, reach out, do your homework. I mean, it's stupid because why it's another excuse to put somebody on the radar exactly. you know to put yourself on the radar yeah. really no brainer it makes perfect sense now of course i know you're going to have the perfect answer to this andrea because <laughs> this is important because we're in the circles okay um, okay tell me that you um you put some special emphasis when it comes to choosing between speakers on csps You'll be pleased to know, <laughs> I am, uh, since I attend many NSA meetings, and I, a lot of them through the decades, yeah. I definitely understand what uh, the meaning behind CSP and all the hard work and the sweat that goes into that, yeah. and the, the uh, CPAE as well, and the CAVIT and all the other awards. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely point that out. I definitely use it as a marketing tool. And I, I think it says a lot about the speakers. Uh, I've always had really good experience with anybody who's a CSP. I feel more confident in checking them out. Mm -hmm. And I try to add all the CSPs into my database. So I have them in there every year. Ah, did you guys hear that? Did you hear that? So if you don't have your CSP, what are you doing? <laughs> Go ahead and do it. All right, Andrew, we, we can talk to you all day. Oh my goodness, hang on, you're everywhere. You're brilliant. Uh, after my next question, I want you to show your book again and tell folks how to get it and how to, you know, because they could learn so much from you. You and I have gone back and forth for a while. <laughs> we to do this. By the way, guys, this issue, uh, I don't know if you see it backwards, but it, this is <laughs> 17. So all you got to do is go to speakermagazine.com. Go to digital issues if you're not already a subscriber, if you're not, what's wrong with you? And then it says May 2017. Go to the last page. You see this beautiful woman back here. I tried to not ask her the same questions, but because she there was only a space for her to answer about six <laughs> months later, you know. And then right with her in the same column is Krista Haverstack, who is the president of C Agency. So she is a exclusive. She represents, uh, she's a speaker agent. So you can learn. She's got great speakers. Best. Yeah, yeah. so work with our speaker. Oh. And then you know when we see Andrea, let her ask her to autograph it. <laughs> You'll do that right for us. So oh here, yes. Here's my question before I forget it. Um, some folks that are new to the whole speaking bro thing may say, "So why do I need to go through all this trouble?" I mean, granted, I know you said earlier it's not necess necessary. Which trouble? The, the trouble of seeking speaker bro re representation. But huh. one question I would love for you to answer is, what's the big why? Can you give us a success story of maybe oh, yeah. of a speaker being represented by a brewer like yourself? What's the success story? Well, I, I'd have to think of one, but let me just tell you the why. The why is, the, the reason why people want speakers bureaus is because we're in another marketing arm and uh, it, you're paying a commission, but it's a lot cheaper than that if you were to really calculate the cost of your marketing to get each client, you know, these are, the, you're not paying anything except if it's booked. So it's performance based. I mean, how good is that? There's no risk. <laughs> and the other beautiful part is you're often getting an industry that you weren't even working with or never even thought you could be part of. Yeah. That's one you didn't think of, right? Oh, that's so, you know, it's like, I, 
I have a way, and this is unique to me, maybe, I don't know. I sometimes can sense, I, I'm very intuitive, and I use that in my work. And I can sense when a speaker is right for something, and I will suggest them for something that they, they just, their marketing materials and nothing supports it. And I, for a totally different industry, I wish I could think of one right now. I'm sure I can, but, and I'll, I'll suggest it. And it's like totally off the wall and, and yet it gets booked and it's a hundred percent successful. So, and the, the speaker is ecstatic because he or she is now working with a whole other industry. It opens up a whole other ball game for them, which we can do together. We can market that or they can do on their own. You know, there's this, this industry is as, creative as an unlimited as you want it to be it's that's the beauty of this industry i always wandered from job to job to job but this industry has held me all these decades and that's because it's so interesting and it's about people imparting information to help others either spiritually uh, educationally or in what form to get better and do better and there, there's um, one thing I wanted to add uh, on another note that we had talked about earlier. And I said, remind me to tell you the story. And that was, um, let me see, I can't remember the context, but uh, there's video, I think. What was it about video? Oh, I got it. You're right. Good memory. Um, the speaker is a six figure speaker. He's a former CEO. My client this is one of my biggest clients and they have six figures and they wanted the most famous uh, CEO leadership type that speaks. So I suggested this person was perfect. They're going to be in a certain city that was related to that person's work. I'm not going to say because it would give it away. <laughs> and my client looked at it and said, this is boring. Mm. So this was somebody's exclusive. I mean, this is a top CEO type. I was so disappointed because it was a perfect suggestion. Um, we're still working on it, by the way. Uh, the reason I bring that up is the video is king. So a lot, of, a lot of celebrities don't even have videos. But you guys that are listening to this, if you're not a household name celebrity, and even when you are, you may need a video. I have people that they, they won't hire anybody. I don't care how famous they are if they don't see a video on them. Because not a video, guys. <laughs> and you know, in today's world, it's so easy to do a video. I mean, my goodness, the, the problem is, and I know this because my husband's a speaker, it's the sound, getting the right sound. So one more tip for you on this, this has nothing to do with bureaus, but if you don't already have a wireless mic, mm -hmm. get a wireless mic and the kind that you can hook to your uh, video camera and then you wear the other one. And that's on top of whatever mic you're using for the, the speaking engagement so that you might have two mics that might look stupid but the thing is you're you're miking yourself for real sound and then you might the other part is audience sound that's where a professional video recording is good that's neat. two mics <laughs> that's hard to that's when you know people are very very uh, hesitant about recording sometimes some are some aren't um if you need some video Allow them to record you, and <laughs> you get a professional one that way. So, little tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade, and even an yeah. tip because I'm fresh off the NSA video lab. So go to the labs, guys. Yeah. Major value is to take an extra SD card and then go to that cameraman and sweet talk him in a nice professional way. Now. Oh my God, that doesn't help. Hurt. That doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know, I want to say something. You wanted me to mention the book, yes, so here's please. the book. And this, this book, it, it really helps people. If you can't invest in yourself a little, then my goodness. Um, Why are you in this in business? business? But I, I would say, and, and I do consultations on this. Um, that's not my main focus, but I, I help people. That's anything that will help people. There's a few pages in here that are about bureaus. So it's about how to work with bureaus. So that, that in itself could answer a lot of questions that we didn't get to here. So just remember, what helps the Bureau? What helps the Bureau? And what will be a win-win for you and the Bureau and the client? Three-way win. It's always about delivering value. You've heard this. It's about integrity, value, 
and also having fun in the process. You know, one last thing I want to say is that working with the Bureau is developing a friendship. There's a trust. There's, it's totally about having fun together. It's not just business. So hopefully, you, you know, you will really enjoy the process and not just think of it as a little money, extra money. You know, it's, it's much more than just a business because you have to work with somebody. And by the way, here's another bureau tip for you. You know, during the recession, we saw a, a number of defaulting bureaus. That was very heartbreaking. A lot of speakers lost a lot of money. And uh, I, I got the, it wasn't for me, but I got some calls from people who were very upset because they didn't get their money. They did the, the performance and they weren't paid ever. Wow. And these bureaus went out of business. So when you like any good business person, you should check out your bureaus and make sure that they're, they have a good history and that they will pay you because they're the ones collecting the money and then they send it to you. So there's got to be a, a complete trust. I mean, you know, when, when you're a, a huge speaker and we're collecting, you know, six figures even, but, but whatever it is, even if it's $3,000, whatever it is, that's your money. So make sure you're working with somebody you trust. Mm. So. You are a gold mine. What website can folks go to to find your book or just find out more about? Well, I don't have it listed on Amazon, so don't go there. Um, this was one I uh, we personally handle. So it's www.goldstars with an S dot com. So it's G O L D S T A R S dot com. And you can imagine and guess where the name Gold Star Speakers Bureau came from because, well, my last name is Gold. So, <laughs> you are golden to just <laughs> from and just personally interacting with you. Thank you as a fellow NSAR. Thank you, uh, the spirit of what we all stand for within NSA mm -hmm. and as a professional speaker. You're awesome, guys. This is what you want. These are our folks. And I love that you book CSPs, which <laughs> is even bigger. So, get out there and do that. I respect that hard work there. I know what they did. And I love, I mean, it was so many big highlights of this interview, but one thing that sticks in my mind, you're another marketing arm. When you, to, that to me just stood out. You're another yeah. marketing arm. We aren't the end all. We're one part of the pie and your major part of the pie really needs to be yourself. There you go. I mean, there's, and I will say there's a few speakers that have, you know, a lot of bureau uh, bookings and those are rare. There are a few. Um, but I think that, the best way is to make sure you're getting your own business. If you can't get your own business, how are we going to get it for you? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Don't forget, guys, she said it. First 30 seconds, let's make it 20 seconds. Not you outside or in front of your computer, but in front of an audience. Yeah, people have short memories. I mean, they're, they're, they're impatient. Woo. <laughs> That's true. Well, thank you, Andrea. I want to respect your time and close out this interview. And thanks to everyone. Don't forget to pick up May 2017 on the newsstands, even the digital newsstand. NSAspeaker.org or actually speakermagazine.com and right here in Super Toolkit column you'll see her lovely face along with Krista's. <laughs> we'll see you next time here. My name is Marquesta Petway, business reinvention expert outside of New York City.